I was a pit clerk in the summers and I, and I did it in college in the summers. I started trading my junior year in college in the summer. It was I actually started trading. Uh, my dad gave me one of his seats to use and then later on I bought my own. I'm embarrassed to say I bought my own IMM in what, somewhere in the 1980s. And I sold it in, uh, in the late 90s when I was out there making movies. Not a good trade. I was young, so you know, I I loved I loved the physical nature of it. You know, I was in mostly I was in the S and P pit, and at that time, eighty two to eighty eight, and it was like you know, it was like a, it wasn't just that your big money on the line; it was a physical battle, and 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 you'd be dripping with sweat. I mean, elbows in your face. It, it was insane. It, the, the waves of humanity that would form before they finally put the bars around it. You know, the waves of humanity, you'd be trading, you got whatever, $50,000 on the line, and you're falling out of the pit onto the goddamn ground. And somehow I loved it. I mean, I was never, you know, I was on baseball team, but, you know, I wasn't a very super athletic guy. But somehow I just, I loved it. I was so addicted. I, I couldn't stand to leave the pit. You know, I'd run out of the pit. I would... I would take like four drags of my cigarette in that little space there. You could outside, right outside the bathroom, where, and I'd run right back in. I, mean, I was really, really addicted to it. When I was young, my father was chairman, and then later on, he was chairman of the executive committee. And, and um, so the lure was always there. But I think that he didn't want me to come down until I had some degree. And I'm not talking just a college degree. He wanted me to have a law degree or something else. And then he would feel okay about it. But he wanted me to have something to fall back on. But I was so hell-bent on trading that uh, I eventually, you know, he gave in. That was after my first year of law school. I sort of had the best of both worlds. Uh, the best and the worst of, of both worlds. The best was, look, I grew up in the business. It was in my blood. I knew how the markets worked. I worked down there as a pit clerk. I had learned the lessons of trading from my father as a kid. I had a lot of advantages going in, but I had one disadvantage is that everybody in the fucking pit would razz me because of my dad. So I did take a lot of shit, right? And they go, oh, your dad's telling you what to do and stuff. Well, you know, in trading, no one can tell you what to do. It moves too fast. You, you, gotta, you, you basically sink or swim on your own. But I think that I was, you know, when I was young, that was, that was a tough thing emotionally. It was, it was hard to deal with at the beginning like stepping into an alternate universe. Like there's a real world, and then there's this world, you're putting on a coat, you're, you're, everybody else has got coats on, so you're, you're a little bit bigger. My personality was bigger. Even now being interviewed about it, I feel a little bit of that same. I was a more, I might say, well, you were, a, that, guy was, that guy was obnoxious, right? <laughs> you know, but, but I was more, I was a little tougher, I was a little more out there. Um, and I think it was a big part of that whole world. Oh, that was a great feeling. You know, the anticipation right before the bell. That's a great feeling. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of banter and everyone's kind of hassling each other. You know, everyone's <laughs> talking about, you know, saying horrible things about everyone, razzing each other. You know, you start to see like, well, you know, what people have and they start to show their hands right before the opening. and. And I love that. I think you get a really good sense of the market from the, the openings and the closings are, are, are huge. Right away, I, was, I, was, I, I made like 100 grand my first year or more. And then I, because I, th I thought, I know what I'm doing, you know. Then I lost it all and I went pretty badly in debt uh, to my dad. And then uh, I was out. So then I went back and I was an order filler and I had to make it back filling orders, which in retrospect taught me a lot because I had to learn the other side of filling 
And then when I went back to trade it, then I went back to trade, I actually, and the fact that I went broke really helped me. Patterned after two things, I think, my father and also the uh, book Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, which was a big influence on my trading, finding the path of least resistance. And then probably what I learned from my father and other traders also at the time was to press my winners. So what was I good at was that as soon as I had a winning trade, you know, three ticks my way, whatever, I would double up. And then four more ticks, I would double up. And I was disciplined. So if it came back to an even or a tiny loss, I would get out. So I trade high volume. I get into a lot of trades and scratch a shitload of trades. But then when I got right, because I pyramided quickly, you know, I would have a nice large position. And once it went, I would just keep... I would keep raising my stop. So it was really that I was, uh, I, I, I took a lot of small losses and I rode my winners. I mean, that was the main thing. I'm not saying I never broke this rule, but I tried to never add to a losing position. Walking on the floor and the buzz, the hum, when it was, when the markets were moving, the sort of noise that would just overcome uh, everything on the floor and one market's going fast market and you could just, it was like, it, 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 it's like a fantasy world and with a lot of dark stuff because you have a, on a bad day, you felt so horrible. So it was not, you know, it, was, it wasn't always like that. But the, the, the buzz of the floor was just, uh, was incredible. And then being in the pit, like just the moments of like when you're kind of lost in it so what's happening is that you're making a trade without even thinking about it. It's kind of coming from your gut. And so it's like, I, I, I would liken it to like an athlete when they say, well, they got in the zone. Well, when you get in the zone and you're trading, that's a great feeling. It's almost like you're, you're doing it without thinking. I made a half a million dollars on my 30th birthday. That was nice. That was very nice. And I got short the S&Ps and I just pressed them and pressed them. And, uh, and, and it was funny because it was kind of after that that I decided that I was going to start to cut back and um, try to make films. You know, holding on to a, a position that was a losing position and you know, I was very stubborn, so I'd get out, I'd take my loss, and I'd get right back in. <laughs> I go, no, I'm right. And, you know, it wasn't a lot of cost then to get in and out. I mean, it still isn't, but, you know what I mean, if you're so, you know, because the round turns are cheap. So, but I, I don't know. You know, obviously there was something that was bothering me. I did leave the business, so, you know, I can't say it was all perfect, but, you know, I think the 87 crash probably was something that was... That was just felt awful. I had a bad day that day. Um, but then I had a really good day the next day because I came in along the Euros. Um, which just was one of my rare fundamental trades. I just figured the Fed's going to do something. So I bought the clothes in the Euros just because I thought the Fed's going to have to flood the market. They're not going to make the mistake that the... that. Uh, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the Great Depression. They're just not going to make that mistake again. And so that made me, but I lost a lot in, in the crash. And just there was the feeling of inside that pit that day was so dark. I thought when I came outside, I thought the world was going to be gone. It was almost like you, you stepped outside. It was like sort of shocked, like that there were buildings were still standing. I think the hard thing about trading is that it's not, I think you feel worse when you're losing you don't get the pleasure of the wins as you, it's not converse. You still, because when you're winning, you're, you have to make a decision. Do you take your profit or what if it goes away? So there's still a lot of pressure when you're winning. So it's very hard to enjoy it until it's, until you're at home. But during the day, that's always, there was always that worry about, about it going away. I went home with positions a lot of time because I would get stubborn right at the end and I was like, it wouldn't. I wanted it to come my way right in the close, and then it didn't come my way in the close, and I just, no, I'm not getting out at this price. I was a trading addict. So if the market was open, I was going to trade. And that's why when I tried, when I was making the film, I tried to trade again, 
and I, I failed in the electronic market. This is 2008, 2009. And I think it was because I, I'm, now you have to be really disciplined about when you make your trades, among other things. And I was not. I, was, I would trade a lot because I would cut my losses. I could be an addict. You know, but but um, I, I, in, my, in that sense, I'm just like my father. I mean, my father will trade until pretty much till the day he dies. I think he'll have, I think he'll have a position on. Knock on wood, he's got another many years to go, but he's still trading. I wasn't, I wasn't an in and out trader, so I wasn't really playing the edge. I was trying to catch the move, whether it was the next 10 minutes or the next half a day or day. So I didn't care so much about whether they hit me. So I was just, I just tried to be, you know, I was just a straight, straight shooter. I wasn't a fan of the locals who stood right in front of me, the ones that were kind of like always only play the edge and never stepped out. I would try to spread it around the pit because I really didn't like that. I didn't like that. I didn't like that idea of just, you know, only playing the edge. I think that people would help each other out when they went down. I thought that was pretty nice. When they would go belly up, a lot of people would pitch in. I mean, I, I, when I had money, I was generous and I'm not crazy, but I, you know, yeah, you know, you, you would help people out who went under. It's strange because it was such a competition, but there was a level of camaraderie when someone would go belly up, and that was a nice thing. And then I've heard stories about people whose kids got sick, and then they create a fund and all that. I, I wasn't, you know, I don't know a specific one. The pit requires that you, you know, look people in the eye and that you honor your trade and that you and you stand up for yourself. I think that was an early lesson that I learned that was a little hard for me. Until you get in someone's face in the pit, no one's taking you seriously. You got to get to the point where you say, no, motherfucker, that's my trade. And I don't care if you're, you're the chairman's son or you're, the, or, or you're a nobody from that. So you got to show that you're going to fight for yours. And then people start taking you seriously. I think that's, I think that's the same everywhere. Well, my father, you know, more osmotically from watching him trade and telling me some of the main trading lessons. I remember he had a poster on his wall that said, be a lover, not a fighter. And uh, that was, I think that was a good trading lesson. I started to trade a bunch of markets. So I tried, I was, S&Ps was my main thing, but then I started to trade uh, Swiss and the yen and gold. And I'd trade the crude at the NYMEX and the bonds at the Board of Trade, and I'm in the pit. I had a clerk, but I'm signaling him. It was really hard, and I loved trading a lot of markets. So I went upstairs, and in 88, 89, 90, I sat in an office, and I traded, and I called the orders down. That's when I initially left the pit, was so I could trade a bunch of markets. And then once a day, I'd come down on the floor and maybe trade a little bit in the pit to like feel the kind of feel what was going on. I learned a lot of bad lessons about money management because, you know, if I, my swings were, when I was doing well, my swings were, you know, where, say, a $15,000 day was a wash. So my swings were, you know, 50, you know, had to be up near 50 to be something that was significant or wouldn't be just washed out in the next day. So, you know, if you're making or losing 50, well, then what's spending uh, $500 in, at the Palm, you know, for dinner? Because it's just, it's, a, it's so minuscule compared to what you're making or losing. And then you go out in the real world and you don't know bupkis about what real life is about and what taking care of your money is about. So what I would change is I would learn, you know, because I went out to film school and here I am with, with a lot of money. And uh, I kept living the same lifestyle. Well, that's a recipe for going broke. And that's what happened to me. You know, I, I, never, I could, didn't change my lifestyle. And uh, it, I, would, I would love to go back in time and fix that. 